Hey everybody, so it's a little bit late, but we're still in the first month of the new year. So I thought I'd do a video on my 2020 hobby resolutions. Now, I didn't do one of these last year because I knew I was going to be moving and I had a lot of stuff going on. So I thought it was kind of futile to try to have hobby resolutions when... I had a lot of real world uh, things that I needed to work on this year. Hopefully, you know, I should be settled in in the next couple of months. And, uh, you know, I can I can start kind of looking at uh, what my hobby life is going to look like out here. So with that in mind, I, I put together my five hobby resolutions of 2020. Now, I probably could have did more than five, but. You know, these five big ones, a lot of the other stuff would fall under here anyway. So uh, while I'm doing these, I'm just going to be showing some uh, images of some of my builds and some of my terrain and miniatures and things uh, throughout 2019. Number one is Paint 6 Board Games. Now, over the last three, maybe even four years... Since Kickstarter, really, uh, I've been purchasing, well, I had been purchasing a lot of board games that came with miniatures. I think my first big one was, uh, well, I did Dead Zone, which I think I've painted up some of it. I still have some of that to paint, but I remember doing Dead Zone. My second one was, I want to say Conan the board game which I think is painted now with all the stretch goals and then I had Blood Rage which I ended up painting and then eventually selling that was a good game then I had Mythic Battles Pantheon which I had painted and then I got rid of it I had painted most of it and then I got rid of it uh, and then there was Zombie Side Black Plague and more recently, uh, what was the most recent? Well, I guess A Song of Ice and Fire was like the last board game I backed on Kickstarter that uh, had a lot of miniatures. And prior to that, there was Massive Darkness. So my goal this year is to paint up at least six of the board games. Like Because what's starting to happen is I've just got tons and tons of miniatures in these board games stacked in my shelves that aren't painted and you know i'm not really playing the games as often as i like but i'd like for them to be painted if i pull it out and additionally i'd like to be able to use them for other things which you will see well when i get to one of my other uh, resolutions for 2020 all right the second one i'm gonna skip two so i'll go to my number three my number third resolution is to attend three West Coast conventions. Now, I, I moved from the Midwest, which was Michigan area. So typically, I hit most of the conventions that were done out there. Like I had been to uh, Indiana, Ohio, uh, you know, and obviously Michigan. But uh, so if there was a convention out in the Midwest, I usually I had either hit it or I knew about it and wasn't interested. Like I had even been to Illinois and like Little Wars and things. So, but I haven't done any of the conventions out here. And specifically, I'm talking about conventions like uh, the Board Game Geek Convention, which I know was in Texas. I don't know if it still is, but uh, ReaperCon, which is another Texas convention. So I had never hit either one of those. Uh, I think there's one like Dragon Con in California, which I might have hit once. Uh, and then there's a there's a couple in uh, Nevada, which I've been to. I've been to one of them in Nevada, which was uh, oh excuse me, it's about eleven o'clock at night. The one I think I had been to was uh, Gamma, and that was kind of related to my uh, my role playing game Journey to the Overland. <laughs> So my goal this year is to just basically get familiar with the uh, conventions out here. So those are kind of the three I'm looking at is Board Game Geek, uh, Reaper Con, which would be probably towards the end of the year, Dragon Con, 
Uh, and then, you know, I'll see what's going on maybe in in Nevada or somewhere out there. But just to kind of see what the uh, gaming scene is like out here and which ones I'm going to like. The thing is, I do not know if I'm going to make it to a Gen Con this year. And I've, I've usually gone to Gen Con every year for a couple of decades since it was in Milwaukee. But if I go this year, first of all, I'm going to have to fly. So that's an added expense as opposed to having dri- driven most years. Well, I haven't always driven. Uh, and then the other problem would be, you know, I really can't bring back anything unless I'm going to pay to ship it. So then that's another added expense. Uh, in the last few years, I had only really been going to Gen Con one or two days uh, for the week, not the whole four days. And really, my main thing that I would always justify going was to take part in the uh, auction because I'd get rid of a lot of stuff that I just wasn't using and stuff. So I'm definitely not going to be able to bring stuff to auction, you know, unless it's just one or two items, which isn't isn't worth it. So... I'm probably not going to do Gen Con this year. Uh, so I'd like to see what other conventions are out here. And I mean, pretty much Gen Con had got into the point where there really wasn't a lot for me to do when I was there anymore. It really wasn't the type of convention I would say for me anymore. Because uh, I just had felt recently Gen Con was, was kind of uh, more about kind of Kickstarter exhibitors and things uh and plus the con had just got so bloated uh i mean there were so many things to see on the exhibit floor that you would never see them all even if you stayed in the exhibit hall every day for the four days and then a lot of it was just stuff that really didn't relate to to you in general and, and specifically but to even wargaming miniatures and role playing in in uh in general so you had costumes, cosplay, anime, computer. You know, and I've said that in other videos, like companies like Haba and USopoly were really starting to put on big displays. And other companies like Wizards of the Coast, uh, Reaper, Games Workshop, they weren't going they weren't showing up anymore. They they weren't coming to Gen Con. So I'm really not that upset about not doing that, but I would like to find something that I would like to have be a go-to convention for me this year. Uh, And so I'm hoping maybe Bork and Geek. uh, We'll see. I may may go to Chicago, actually, and do Adepticon, which I've only done a couple of times, but it might make sense to do that because then I could combine it with a trip home. The third resolution is I'd like to attend PAX Unplugged. Now, PAX Unplugged is in Philadelphia, so of course that would be an air trip as well from here. But I have never been to PAX Unplugged. I've heard good things about it. Uh, I know it is a, a convention that focuses more on actually playing games and gaming sessions than kind of the exhibitors and buying stuff. So, but that is one that I might change like you know a couple of months into the year if if i'm really like kind of kind of hit my convention thing and i really don't want to spend any more money then i might not do that but philadelphia is a cool city i've visited there and uh you know pax unplug comes around the time of the year when it would be kind of nice just to you know get on the plane and you know head out to the east coast so that's that's a that's one of my looser uh resolutions this year because i usually try to at least make sure i've i've attended most of the big name conventions like you know i had never been to historicon up until a couple of years ago and so i checked that off uh so yeah that's kind of the reason i've i've got packs unplugged on here number four my number fourth resolution is to play 12 solo games now this doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be solo games but it just means to play 12 games solo to get 12 sessions in so hopefully i'll do a lot more than 12 with the channel if the channel keeps growing but the main thing I'm, I want to do is at least get one game session in per month. That's why I put 12 in there. So I may play Zombie Side Black Plague solo. I may play A Song of Ice and Fire solo. Or I may play just a solo game like 
Patton's Best or uh, uh, what was that one? I think it was called uh, Air Leader or Squad Leader. So there's two of them. Squad Leader, I know, uh, is not solo. Uh, Ambush is. But there's a there's kind of like an air version of Patton's Best that I uh, that I've been wanting to play. Although I don't know if I own it or not. I know it doesn't go for that much, but that's kind of what I have in mind. Hopefully, I will double that, and so it will be more than 12, but, you know, at least if I have to go, you know, I can always just give one session in every month uh, before, you know, the month ends, and I'll be on track. And the final thing, the final one that I skipped over, which was my number two actually on my list, and this might shock a lot of you. Is to get rid of 500 miniatures. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you are probably like, if I got rid of 500 miniatures, that would be my whole collection. But for me, unfortunately, that would not really put a dent in my collection. Uh, when I moved, I did a kind of a cursory inventory of all the miniatures I had. And I just had uh, buckets or... Con- containers, storage containers after containers after containers after containers of miniatures. And I was thinking to myself, you know, some of these need to go. And I mean, I have miniatures that go back probably, mm, I'd say 202. So what is that? We're going on 20 years? Yeah. And so my my objective this year is to get rid of at least 500 miniatures now to 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 make it not be as drastic as it sounds most of them will be old miniatures that were painted years ago that i have better versions of so for example old goblins old doors old uh you know, standard human soldiers, things that back before we had this this modern era of miniatures where the quality and the quantity has uh, increased, uh, where you would kind of buy whatever you could get, right? And then you'd get around to painting them and, you know, you were as happy as you could be, right? So... My goal now is to get rid of a lot of that stuff. A lot of miniatures from games like uh, Lionheart, if you remember that. Games like Battle Masters, if you remember that. Games like uh, Crossbows and Catapults, where I just I I would just buy those every time I saw them, and throw those miniatures into piles. And a lot of them wound up getting painted. Some of them. Some of them are still, I still have that are not painted. So either way, my goal is to get rid of about 500 miniatures. Now, the other thing that's going to help make this possible is getting rid of some of these board games that I mentioned at the very beginning that comes with buttloads of miniatures that I'm either not going to pay me to play the game or I'm not going to paint the miniatures. So, you know, believe it or not, sometimes you do get Kickstarters. And you just, the miniatures don't look as impressive as they did in the Kickstarter, right? The, the actual miniatures don't live up to the, uh, to what you saw on screen, the renders. So my goal is to kind of go through my collection and take a look at anything I have like that. Any of these games, like I have games like Wrath of a Charter Line, which I know that's not a Kickstarter, or castle ravenloft some of these you know that you would buy when they came out because they were a great source to get 50 60 miniatures you know for 50 bucks or whatever that nowadays you go through that box and you know some of the miniatures don't 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 hold up as well anymore so if you get rid of one of those boxes for example a wrath of a Chardonnay or castle raven loss that's 50 of the 500 miniatures so basically if i got rid of 10 games 10 board games with miniatures i could get i could hit my 500 goal but i do want to get rid of them for two reasons mainly one is just because you know i don't want to be a hoarder right and with the whole whiz kids line coming out a lot of those miniatures i'm buying I have versions of them. I just 
the whiz kids look better than what you know what i previously had so i'm just going to get rid of the ones that you know i don't need you don't need you know a hundred townspeople i mean let's just be honest if you have 20 30 townspeople that's gonna always be enough for any type of game you don't need just a hundred townspeople you know 40 bar people 30 you know farmers 20 you know townsfolk on the street so that's one of my reasons the other reason is because no man it kind of slipped my mind The other reason I want to cut it down uh, with the 500 is so that I will be more aware of what I have. Because when I was moving, you know, I was shocked to go through and say, wow, I forgot I even had this. Or, man, I bought such and such. And if I knew I had this, I wouldn't have bought that stuff. So I just really want to pare it down so that at any given time, I can kind of go to one or two places in my home and see what miniatures I got and say, okay, I don't have that. Or yes, I do have that as opposed to miniatures that are just buried away. And, uh, you know, you look four years later and you've bought the same type of miniature three or four or five times. Oh, I need a good troll or I need a, a good giant with a staff instead of a giant with a sword and then you go and you find you've got four giants with staffs or things that could be staffs so that is my five 2020 new year's resolutions uh for the hobby so feel free to share a couple of yours in the comment let me know what you think of mine and uh stay tuned for the chat to the channel take care everybody god bless